bottom left. Today I wanted to go through um, about the MDT chassis. Um, we just got this new chassis for our 65 Creedmoor build in the Hower. Um, and I wanted to go through the details about the chassis. Um, I don't really term my stuff as reviews. I don't think I have enough um, experience with different equipment to really give it an honest um, comparison review. But what my found and an overview of this chassis. Um, to start off with, it is the ESS chassis um, from the guys at Modular Driven Technologies in Canada. I spoke to the guys, great to deal with. Um, and I had first seen this chassis, I started to see these, these chassis around the place. Um, I thought they were great looking chassis. I liked the look of the design of them. Um, and for that reason, I was certainly interested. Uh, with some closer looking, I could see that I, I wanted to get the chassis for me to do some mods to. Um, but I don't want that to take away. And part of the reason I want to do this overview is I don't want my mods to the chassis to take away from the chassis qualities itself. Um, to start off with, it is modular driven chassis uh, or modular driven technologies. Um, and they do come in a modular form. So when you're buying a chassis, you're buying three separate parts from MDT. Um, the base or the actual the center of the chassis, uh, the buttstock um, and the fore end all come as separate pieces. You get them in the one box but all come as separate pieces. Um, they bolt together in the ESS, it bolts together in a simple solid bolting point. It has a keyway, it keys in there, a big Allen screw, simply bolts it together nice and rigid and makes the back half of the chassis um, essentially function as it's all one piece. And I suppose for, in that matter the fore end that bolts on with three bolts, the keys in as well, really once it's all bolted together becomes a rigid, rigid piece of CNC aluminium from front to rear. Um, works really nice on that score and it's worked and it's worked really well. The way it bolts down in the centre here, a V-block, um, very accurate, fine CNC. So for the um, for all of them, as as I've been told, the only one I can honestly talk about is with this Hauer 1500 that bolted in nicely, bolted up, no messing around. Haven't bedded it. Um, from what I understand, I don't need to. I'm going to see how things go. I'm going to go through the process of using it. Yesterday we shot it to 2,000 yards. It was very consistent. Was really impressed with it. I was also very impressed with, and I'll put on a little bit of image, as to how the whole rifle cycle. Okay. I have my muzzle Short brake, have bits and pieces Five set up, I've moved the butt edge. stock, but largely I'm that's way. about the rifle, how 1500, 65 oh, nice. more in this yeah. chassis, and how nicely it fired, how nicely it cycled. So I was very happy with that. In the centre, in this base side of things, um, uh, well, I suppose actually I'll go, from, I'll go from the front to the back of the chassis to explain what it is, how it works, and what I found with it. I have, and this is the bit that I've modified, I want to point out that this is something that I wanted to do for, for, for me. Um, as for enhancing the accuracy or the consistency of the chassis, I don't believe I've done that at all. This is another forend. I got essentially a 15 inch, sorry, a 15 inch forend and a 12 inch forend. Um, I wanted to be able to have them both here to test them and mess around. Um, this is, as you can see, this is just a Harris bipod. Um, it's bolted to, because of the octagonal shape of this, where they have a nice V down the bottom here, means that the likes of the Harris Biopod bolts on there simply using the, the um, sling stud. Um, it won't move at all, it's nice and rotate, it's nice and flat, so it's actually holding in there nicely. Um, the, the problem you have with a lot of stocks um, and other things like F-Class and that, where they have a flat bottom, they don't get to grip properly on the bottom, so they get to rotate this design where it does grip properly. Most chassis do, these are probably a little bit nicer with that octagonal shape where it's really gripping on nicely. They have their QD locks, they have their, their um, end lock rail, they have all bits and pieces. Not something that I really use at all, so not something that's an issue for me. For the um, precision rifle uh, shooting people, PRS people, um, there's some real benefits through here including ha um, hunting and tactical and that side of things, some real benefits. For me, not an issue, uh, so I won't go too much into that. I did want to go through the fact that what I've done with my bipod is, like I said, for me, there's some features that folds away nicely, has a higher centre of gravity, all that sort of stuff. Is it going to make it shoot better than a, um, this is a Harris or even an El Cheapo knockoff or any of those sort of bipods? No. If you've got the rest of it set up properly, no, it's not going to make it shoot with any real difference. Um, it is, they are made to function properly with an all bipod. 
So anyway, that's the forend side of things. I should touch on that. It's all on their website, but they have essentially nine different forends you can put on this. Um, three different styles. One, this is the clean style with nothing on it. They have another style that has a, a short, a six inch or roughly six inch Picatinny rail on the front of it. And then another one that has a full rail on it. Um, I chose, I wanted for what I wanted to do, um, it nice and clean. So that's what I went with. Um, in all three different ones, they have three different lengths. 12 inch, 15 and 18 inch. Um, this is the 15 inch, which means that it would come to there. And they look great like that as well, you know, in the in this flat dark earth um, with the black barrel looks really nice inside there. I chose when I modified things to make it black, I thought that was going to look nice as well. But um, this was, I actually used the, this is a 12 inch that I've locked off to do here um, to work how I wanted it to work. Anyway, that's the fore end. The, um, the actual base or the centre with the action bolts, they have this stuff here, I'm not sure what it is, I probably could read, it's probably on the website. But it's a, it's a synthetic of some sort, a plastic or a polymer of some time or other. Looks like it's CNC'd. I haven't actually asked those questions, but there's a nice bit in the way of a foregrip. Same stuff as they've made the cheek riser out of. But that's this. They take two different magazines. Um, I've used the metal ones, very similar to the ACIS magazine. Um, they have the magazine release is nice and sensible. It's actually ambidextrous. It pokes out both sides. You know, that's nice and simple in the way it releases on there. Um, it, that'll work nicely. I did have to grind a little bit off the front of the magazine. Um, that is the magazine working with the um, Howe 1500 and how that sits inside there. Uh, but otherwise all fitted beautifully and neat and tidy. Um, as mentioned, um, the way it bolts to the back here, going to the buttstock, um, is really nice and solid. That really bolts in nice and solidly. From what I've read, um, they are coming out with a folding stock. I don't know if that's happened yet. Um, not an issue for me, not something I wanted. I wanted that to bolt down nice and solid. Um, and it's not just like a lot of chassis have the uh, buffer tube, essentially like an AR-15, and then take on all those sorts of plastic and otherwise in the way of the AR-15 um, butt stocks. I deliberately didn't want that. I did want this um, nice straight in line, no um, moving parts in the chassis part itself. Um, they have the adjustment in screws and lockdown points for the back of it. I'll get there in a second. Um, this is almost an inch thick. It, although it's skeletonized this way, it's nice and broad, so nice and rigid. Not super light, um, not too heavy either. Um, and I haven't actually weighed the stock. They may have that information on there. As a completely dressed gun, I came up into the 16 pounds. I have added some weight, got a decent size scope on it, it's the long heavy varmint barrel, it's got a steel muzzle brake on it, um, I've added some weight down the back here. So going to the buttstock, the bit I did, or what it comes with, it doesn't come with this black piece, it doesn't come with this bag rider on here. It does come like this with this angle on here that has a couple of threaded screws in there to be able to bolt on a short um, Picatinny rail. That's to be able to bolt whatever you want on there, obviously most commonly for the likes of a, a monopod, you can, a quick release one or a bolt on monopod that goes onto that rail is what that's designed for. I'm not a big fan of monopods, I didn't want to go to that place, so I chose to make my own, which was simply a piece of 30 mil aluminium rod or aluminium bar, lopped it off, ground it down, I milled an angle on here that made that sit nice and straight, um, and then drilled through ho two holes on there to um, screw into the bottom there. I'll actually talk to the guys. It might be something that MDT are going to, they may even have it on the, in the works. I'll suggest it anyway as to something they could build. Um, if that's not what they do, then it might be something we build. But we'll certainly give talk to them um, and I wouldn't be surprised if you see it on their site at some time not too in the future. Other features down the back here. Um, it has, like I said, it's made out of this polymer or plastic or polyurethane, whatever it is, um, nice and hard. It's just, it's just a plastic feel to it, so it won't be too cold on your cheek and that sort of stuff. But a CNC piece that then runs a, um, a thread for adjustment, it, but it isn't just thread adjustable. It actually has this solid shaft at the back here that I won't bother about turning it around, but on the other side there's an Allen key that comes through there, same as that comes through here. Uh, which actually lock that down. So it means that then it's not only um, 
stopping it from moving so much, but it also gives a, a dual point, which means there's no flexibility in how that moves. So they sit on nice and neat and tidy. The back, the butt stock here, what they've done here, this is all CNC aluminium, nice soft, squishy um, butt pad on it. This is adjustable, there's a screw in the middle here, you loosen that um, and you can slide this up and down. It goes up nicely, so I could get it in line here for the straight push, which is what I'm chasing. Um, it also, if you push it right up, there's an adjustment screw in here that'll let you swivel it. So you can actually swivel the butt pad to suit where you want to shoot, where you want to put it in your shoulder pocket. I don't use my shoulder pocket, I sit them on the collarbone. Um, so I like it nice up and, uh, up and straight. My collarbone basically sits in, in here, so it's nice and in straight and in line. Um, but that's really front to rear of this, um, of this chassis. Um, as said, I chose it because, well, I've seen them around the place a little bit. Um, they are a really nice looking chassis um, and the aesthetics are something that caught my eye. I like the design. There's a nice straight through um, in the way of the strength side of things look really good. Um, the shape of this in the, the barrel guard suited what I was going to do here. Um, but I really like the look of the form of the, the really the way they work is another thing. And as I said, um, we shot out to 2,000 yards yesterday. It was very, very consistent. Um, very hard shot we're trying to do. And that's not so much the 2,000 yards. That's the little tiny spot we're trying to lob things into. Um, and the, without the consistency of a, um, of a platform, as the, like this chassis is, um, we wouldn't have got that done. So anyway, I just wanted to overview that. Main reason I do this is to show people a little closer this stock. This is in the Howe 1500. They do it in all the major ones. Um, they do it for the, the Remington 700. They do it for the Savage. They do it for Tika T3s, I think. So there's a, there's a range of them um, that go in here. They really do take a, um, a factory action. So this is a factory barreled um, or barrel in action in the Howe 1500. It did actually have the, the Berserk stock, the GRS Berserk stock on it. Um, but then it looks like a proper custom gun. Looks great. Um, and to be truthful, it's shot like that too. Anyway, I just want to, um, I wanted to go through and point out that my mods that I've done to this were not to make this chassis to, to fix problems with this chassis. They were very much about um, what I wanted to do. This chassis works really well without my mods on there. Um, don't get me wrong, I like my mods, I like the look of them, I like the way they work, but this is still a very, very nice chassis. Works really well. Um, and I suppose I would also say there, as I started, I wouldn't call this a review. I don't shoot with enough different chassis. I've shot with a few, but I don't have enough to call it, it good, bad, or otherwise really on that score. Um, I like the look of it, personally, um, and in my opinion, it shot really well, um, and I think they look great. But anyway, guys, um, that's, um, that's what I wanted to tell you. Um, check them out. All the information's on the MDT website. The guys are really great to work with. Um, they did the right thing by us, um, and yeah, I'm wrapped with it. I think it's a great looking thing, and it shot really well.